The components of a good internal control system can be broken down into five components. These are the five components and we're going to talk about each of them in detail. The first component is a strong control environment. The company needs to have a strong control environment, which means that the tone at the top has to be ethical. The owners and top managers have to act ethically. If not, it gives the wrong message to the employees. Basically, this is where we're saying lead by example. Sometimes if you work for a large company, you would see a corporate code of ethics that's a key ingredient in the control environment. From day one, you tell your employees that you want them to act ethically. Management does so by acting ethically and leading by example. And there's a written corporate code of ethics that tell the employees these are behaviors that are not acceptable within the company. When you set it down up front, it's more likely that you will have a strong control environment. The corporate code of ethics typically goes into detail, such as prohibition against giving or taking bribes, kickbacks from customers or suppliers, prohibiting transactions that involve conflicts of interest, but it'll also encourage good citizenship and promote things like social responsibility. If a manager does not abide by the code of ethics and does things that are fraudulent or goes against the code of ethics, basically it sends a message to your employees that we have all these control procedures, but those are not really important because the manager is not leading by example. So one of the most important ingredients is the control environment. The top managers and owners have to act ethically for internal controls to be effective. The next component of a strong internal control system is to conduct a risk assessment. What a risk assessment does is it identifies business risks and then establish procedures to deal with risks. For example, let's take a look at Kraft Foods. What kind of risks would Kraft Foods face? The number one risk would be that their food products could be contaminated and could harm people. Another risk may be that the company could run out of money and they could face bankruptcy. Once a company identifies all the possible business risks, they have to come up with procedures to prevent those risks and causing the company financial or any other harm. Information systems mainly deal with how accounting information enters and exits the company. Also, we have to have a system where every transaction is captured as they occur, journalize those transactions, post them in the ledger, and report them in the financial statements. The fourth component is control procedures. We're going to go through each of these procedures in detail later, but these control procedures are built into the control environment as well as the information system. The control procedures are how the companies used to meet the five objectives of internal controls. So whenever we go through the control procedures, you need to know that those control procedures are how companies meet the five objectives of internal control. The final component of a strong internal control system is to make sure there are monitoring controls. Monitoring controls basically prohibit one employee or a group of employees from processing a transaction completely. What this does is there are two eyes on a process which makes sure that one person checks on the work of another person and that one employee cannot commit fraud because there are multiple pairs of eyes looking at a particular transaction. On top of having monitoring controls for processes, you want to make sure that program controls are built in to the computerized system so there are checks and balances there. Another way that you've got monitoring controls is companies hire auditors to monitor controls. There are auditors called internal auditors. These auditors monitor controls from inside the company. Internal auditors are employees of the company, however, they audit the processes and the controls within the company. Then there's external auditors. External auditors test from outside the company 
they do not work for the corporation. If the company is a publicly traded company, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act requires external auditors to test the controls and, and to give an opinion whether the internal controls are accurate and reliable.